my Mercedes. Oh, tight skin gowns to my Cadillac. Cadillac, that's the Granada. Alone at last, beloved. Beloved? Where's my bride? You got that Mercedes with another man. Another man? The new Ford Granada. One way to tell it from Cadillac or Mercedes is its sticker price. When America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. Are you still chained to? Gotcha! The rechargeable Norelco rotary razor lets you walk away, free from nicks and cuts. Its 36 surgical steel rotary razor blades are safely protected inside three floating heads to give you a comfortable shave that's razor close, razor smooth, for up to three weeks on a single charge. The rechargeable Norelco rotary razor. It lets you walk away from... Gotcha! In seven years of All in the Family, you've never seen an hour-long story like this. Lady, I'm going to tie you up. One hour of comedy and drama, Sunday at 9, 8, Central and Mountain. Blue skies here in Philadelphia, and right now they're a little blue in Philadelphia. The Eagles trailing 14 to 3. That last drive, 68 yards, took 6 minutes and 28 seconds. This is Wilbert Montgomery. Montgomery to the 20, 25, and to the 26-yard line. So the Cardinals, two very fine drives, have taken a 14 to 3 lead. Pat Tilly making the tackle on that kickoff, 6-28, and they came twice from what, second and 15 second yards? Second and 15 yards. Second and really 25. So now the ball just across the 25-yard line. The Eagles have started out with their initial series and picking up three points on the field goal. Ryan Jaworski now playing catch-up. Kansas City trailing 14-6. Baltimore had led 14 to nothing in that one. Jaworski on first down is going to throw. And it's complete to Charlie Smith. And Smith moves it outside the 30-31 yard line. That was that was a great throw because here's Jaworski setting up again, coming back, and this is what you have to do in those short sideline patterns. You want to lead the receiver to the outside and low so that defensive back cannot get up there to make the interception. This is a great throw, and it's even a spiral. I never threw one of those because <laughs> <laughs> that tape on your arm kept getting in the way. Second down, five. Jaworski on the delay action. Here's Tom Sullivan. Sullivan breaks one tackle, and he's short of the 35-yard line. Sullivan stopped by Mark Arneson, so they're going to be two yards short of that first down. This was a good play by the, the Eagles' offensive line. They had a blitz going on. It was a, it was a quick delay to the inside. Sullivan made a good adjustment on the ball and came back over. Going to bring another tight end, Richard Osborne, checking in. Osborne started out last year with the Eagles, went to the Jets, and reacquired this year by Philadelphia out of Texas A&M. Backer Tim Carney. I don't know. It looks like they're a little short from our vantage point, but I missed on one earlier, so I will <laughs> abstain from calling this one. I don't know. It looks pretty good. You know, it's interesting in that uh, Baltimore Kansas City game. John Brockington, who was just picked up by Kansas City, scored on a one-yard run. The point after touchdown wasn't any good, but uh, Brockington has over 5,000 yards rushing in his career to date. Well, I'm 0 for 2 now. I'm thinking that's the first down. <laughs> I didn't think they had it either, so I'll have to go along with you on that one, Gary. That was a close one. Well, that is a big one, too, because Philadelphia needs to get something going with 2.37 left here in the second quarter. They've got all their timeouts left. They've got the two-minute timeout, you'd go, so they've got really four basic timeouts left. Here's where a young quarterback has got to use his time, get the ball club moving. If they can get a score before the, the half here, they're back in this ball game. Carmichael and Smith to the top of the screen, flanked out. Jaworski off to Hogan. Hogan trying to get outside. He does to the 40, 45 yard line. He slipped or he might have gotten more running room. Lee Close. Nelson coming up over there. Close to the first down. That was good hard running. I think he had an automatic on the line of scrimmage there. That's something that you didn't have when you were playing quarterback. <laughs> Let me tell you, they were lucky if I got the ball handed off. So we have the two-minute warning here in the first half of play. The Cardinals lead the Eagles 14 to 3. This fresh egg is going to help us sell this brand new Freeflex shoe from Freeman. Watch.
You can do it with any new Freeman Freeflex. Let's use the same egg. Hello, everybody. Alaska, tough on people, tough on oil filters. So we took Motorcraft oil filters to Alaska, testing them in 50 GM, Chrysler, and Ford cars and trucks. After six rugged months of Alaskan pipeline country, from winter's freeze to the hot, choking dust of summer, only one oil filter couldn't take the punishment. This is Lowell Thomas reminding you, no matter what you drive, wherever you drive, ask for Motorcraft oil filters from Ford. Tested tough in Alaska. So long. Two minutes remaining now in this first half of play. The Eagles have a second down, a short yard to go from their own 45-yard line as Ron Jaworski completing his talk with Dick Vermeil heads back to the huddle. You know, this is a time where a lot of teams spend a lot of time in preparation for what they call a two-minute offense. And this is where you're trying to move that ball down. You know what kind of prevent defenses that St. Louis is going to throw against you. You try to get a couple plays called in the huddle prior to it so you can keep that ball moving down the field. It's going to be interesting to see Jaworski do this. Excuse me, Tom. Each team with three timeouts remaining. Back to throw Jaworski. Dumps it off. This is Hogan. Got the first down to the 50. And did he get out of bounds at the 45-yard line? Steve Neal's hit him. And at the 45-yard line, first down. And now the Eagles continuing to move the football. Just dumping it on the far side. We have this clock stopped now with 145. You know, here's a time where a halfback should know that he has got to get out of bounds to stop that clock instead of using up a, a you know, a, a timeout here. This is where you've got to get, you get that first down and then you get out of bounds. So what in effect happened, Hogan did not get out of bounds and the Eagles have to use their first Here timeout. he has every opportunity. Jaworski sets out, he's, he hits the outlet man, he's looking downfield, sets it up. He knows that they're gonna be going deep. Now he got, here's where he has an opportunity. Get out there. Head for that sideline. Don't even think about cutting back to the inside. He gets the first down. It's going to be interesting to see what happens as far as your worst he's calling. He's going to keep hitting those, those flaring backs to the outside. Actually, Philadelphia using one of those timeouts, timeouts now. They have two remaining. St. Louis with three. A minute 45. The ball now at the 45-yard line of St. Louis. Ron Jaworski doing a good job of dumping that ball off, finding people open. Those linebackers on St. Louis are getting the depth. They're trying to keep away from the big gainer to keep them out of that field goal range, and they're going to be able to hit these backs. You know, the philosophy on defense and to prevent defense is let them throw it in front of you and come up and make the tackle on it. And this is exactly what they're going to do. They'll give them the 5, 7, 10 yards. First down, 45-yard line, about at 45 remaining. First tap. Jaworski, beautiful protection. Now breaking down. Davis chasing him. He's got some running room. Now he cranks up. Carmichael's down there. Smith is down there. It's intercepted. Intercepted by Mike Sensabaugh. Smith, Carmichael, Sensabaugh, everyone down there. And Mike Sensabaugh just wanted that football in the worst way. It was he it. comes away with the interception. His first of the year as the Cardinals top the drive. Billy Joe, you are dressed for a Del Rio dog fight. You'd sure look better in Hager's slacks. Or a Hager sport coat and slacks. Even a Hager vested suit. A variety of outfits you don't have to be rich to afford. Oh, Billy Joe, you look like a million dollars. Make that too. Billy Hager, Joe. because looking good makes you feel good. Hey, Mom. Stop sitting around, Mom. Let's take a ride in my new Ford pickup. All right, let me drive. Hope I can handle it. This is the one that's built tough with Ford's exclusive twin I-beam suspension and a new four-speed overdrive option. All right. And extensive rust-fighting materials on underbody parts. What you think, Mom? You may think I'm off my rocker. This Ford is tough. Of all Ford trucks registered over the last 12 years, 93 out of 100 are still on the job. Well, Tom, as you look back on that play, Jaworski looked like he had a lot of running room when he released the ball. He sure did. He had a lot of running room down the side. All he had to do is tuck that thing in, and he could have got out of bounds before getting hit. You know, a quarterback's first rule is don't get hit. But he had that sideline to run down. He could have possibly even gotten the first down for it. 
since the ball his first interception now with a minute 33 Jim Hart is 10 of 12 passing for 128 yards and a tough situation at the two Hart to Wayne Morris and Morris out to about the four yard line now you got to be very careful protecting that football <laughs> I'll tell you one thing you know we used to be in the huddle in the United States cover with both hands <laughs> So just short of the five and a timeout called by Philadelphia. That is their second. So they have one remaining with 124. If you like boxing, we've got some coming your way. And I know people viewing it in the St. Louis area are going to look forward to this. Leon Spinks and Scott Ledoux, a heavyweight matchup from Las Vegas. And then his brother Michael, who was a gold medal winner in the middleweight class in the Olympics, will be going against Gary Summerhays. And then we're going to have yet another boxing bout. We have a triple header or whatever. Bernardo Mercado against Greg Johnson. Mercado is ranked 10th in the heavyweight class. He's 6'4", 221 pounds. He could be playing out here today. He's that's probably got a reach like down to his ankles, too. That's <laughs> next Saturday right here on the CBS Sports Spectacular, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And also the world's strongest man. You know what they got coming up next? Next week, a wheelbarrow race. They got to put 750 pounds in a wheelbarrow and go 30 yards with it. <laughs> that reminds me of those linemen used to push those big sleds around, but not 730 pounds of them. One of those competitors, by the way, is Cardinal guard Bob Young, who's playing with a broken left hand encased in a cast, a lighter cast, by the way, they had a week ago. Here it is, second and seven, a minute 24. The Eagles, one timeout remaining. Terry Metcalf. And Metcalf bringing the ball out to the nine. It's interesting. He was carrying that ball in his left arm again. Frank well, Lamaster making the tackle. He's had so much success with not fumbling. I think that he's really concentrating on holding that ball with the left hand. He's been so successful. When you think about holding that onto that ball with it, you know, it, it just makes you uh, more aware of how to hold that thing. And coming off that cast, I don't think he has that much trust in that right arm yet. See you. Look at the time with 54 seconds remaining, and we have. A third down. Eagles hoping now to at least get a crack at the football. All right, giving off to Metcalf again. Metcalf is not going to get that first down, and now the Eagles use their last timeout. They stop the clock with 39 seconds. And Dwayne Carroll, who is the new putter for the Cardinals, is put into a pressure situation now. You know, it's interesting here. If he has a short kick, they could fair catch that ball and have a free kick and a shot at that field goal. Saw that happen one time. Chester Markle of the Green Bay Packers. You know, the NBA is just around the corner. In fact, the NBA on CBS returns on October 28th. And you talk about a great one to tip it off with. The defending world champion Portland Trail Blazers against the Philadelphia 76ers. Bill Walton, Maurice Lucas. And we got a guy by the name of a doctor, Julius Irving, <laughs> will be going against each other. That'll be at 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time as the NBA on CBS returns for another exciting season. Uh, just a rematch of that playoff series they have. We had the opportunity last night to sit down and talk with Bill Cunningham for a little while. And Billy Cunningham will be Mike's side to be bringing all that action. Dwayne Carroll, there he is. 39 seconds left. They're going to be coming after it. Look out. He just got that underway. Larry Marshall is back now at the 42-yard line. Marshall gets away from Ken Stone to the 50-yard line. So at the 50-yard line, that was a fine kick under pressure by Dwayne Carroll, a 47-yard kick and very close to being blocked, but he kept his concentration, got good foot into the ball. That's when you find out whether a kick really has a lot of guts because he knows they're coming after that ball. And hanging up there for a 47-yard punt, that's great. So just short of the 50-yard line. Time remaining, 29 seconds. You see it on the right-hand corner of the screen. Carmichael to the near side. Smith to the top of the screen. Jaworski play action fake. Here comes Jankowski after him. Smith can't hang on. Lee Nelson. Nelson made contact, and Charlie Smith could not hang on at the 30-yard line. It was still a great throw by Jaworski. It was right in there. The problem with 29 seconds left to go, now it's 23. You've got to use those sidelines. Play action fake. Jaworski drills that ball right into his bad place again, those hands. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, Lee Nelson will hit you, though. I mean, he's got a reputation. He'll just go out and sacrifice himself. Yeah, he, he's a young kid, but I'll tell you one thing. He does hit people. 
So it's the 50-yard line now, second and 10. Eagles, no timeouts remaining. Play action. Jaworski scrambling around pretty well. Cranking up and throwing him. Almost again. It's twice now. Smith has almost made the catch at the 30-yard line. You know, Jaworski does a pretty good job of scrambling back there. He's got good movement. He can move around there, and that's, that, you know, that makes it tough on a defensive pass rush. Uh, you know, some of the great quarterbacks, look at Fran Tarkey and all the records he sets. One of the things he's noted for is the fact that he can scramble around there. And that puts a lot of pressure on that defensive lineman to try to contain him and keep him inside that pocket. If Jaworski can get outside like he did on that play, he's got the time to find a receiver, but then he's got to find a receiver that's going to catch the ball for him. Well, you know, John Zook was talking about that thing last week when you play Staubach in Dallas. You always got to have that outside containment on him. That's right. Third down, 10. Still 14 seconds left in this first half. Jaworski, a little screen pass complete to Hogan, and he's hit hard as he advances to the 47-yard line. Good coverage at time. Coming up on the play was Giblin, who was in the ball game, along with Ken Reeves. And now that's going to end this first half of play. So the Eagles trying desperately to get on the scoreboard here. Their first touchdown of this game. Do not get the job done. And so at halftime, the Cardinals, who desperately need a win here today, coming in with a disappointing one and three record, lead 14 to three. An impressive first half show by the Cardinal offense on two sustained drives. So it's halftime. We'll be back to join you after this. Wherever you may roam, you'll find our name is known. You can trust a Delco. Thanks, Delco. Delco Freedom Battery. When things are getting thick and you want to start real quick, you can trust a Delco. Thanks, Delco. Delco Freedom Battery. They've got the stuff. When the start is tough, you can trust a Delco. Thanks, Delco. Delco Freedom Battery. Delco Freedom Battery. Thanks, Delco. Schlitz Light. Schlitz Light beer has a third fewer calories than our other fine beer, and all the taste beer drinkers expect from Schlitz. Why does he drink that? It is his beer. It's the only light beer with gusto. Schlitz Light. Beer drinkers know it took Schlitz to bring the taste to light. Who is the number one investment firm in the East? Who is the number one investment firm in the Midwest? Who is the number one investment firm in the South? Who is the number one investment firm in the West? You know who. Merrill Lynch. All around America, more investors turn to Merrill Lynch than any other investment firm. Sure, there are lots of investment firms, but there's only one Merrill Lynch. In seven years of All in the Family, you've never seen an hour-long story like this. You know, you smell wonderful. Oh, that lemon pledge! You should be here at 6 o'clock. Yeah, You're not just a couple of... Edith's 50th birthday party sets the stage for comedy and astonishing drama on a one-hour special of All in the Family, Sunday at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. Next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, CBS Sports Spectacular presents a boxing triple header with gold medalist Leon Spinks taking on Scott Ledoux in a heavyweight contest. Gold medalist Michael Spinks goes against the Canadian champion Gary Summerhays in a light heavyweight matchup. Tenth-ranked heavyweight Bernardo Mercado tangles with Greg Johnson. And the world's strongest men competition features the wheelbarrow race. That's next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. The Cardinals with a 14-3 lead in this battle, in this interdivision battle between the Eagles and St. Louis. You know, at the top of the show, Tom Maddy, we said Jim Hart was iffy. What did he do in the first half? 10 of 12 for 128 yards. He's having a fantastic afternoon. He's picking the defensive part. He's getting the time to throw the ball, the offensive line, the great offensive line. It's just been great for him. All right, they had one drive of six and a half minutes. Now let's go to NFL Sports Control. All right, a lot of questions about tomorrow night. Will Terry Bradshaw quarterback the Pittsburgh Steelers against Cincinnati? Of course, last Sunday, Bradshaw broke his left wrist, his non-throwing wrist. We have checked with Pittsburgh Steelers coach Chuck Knoll. 
Terry has practiced this week. He expects him to be in his starting lineup tomorrow night. He's wearing a half cast, a hard cast. Terry has just one problem, taking snaps. There is constant pain when the center jams the football between those hands. And so Chuck experimented with having the center take some of the steam off of the snap, but it threw the timing completely off. So he says Bradshaw will have to play through the pain if he goes. If he doesn't go, Neil Graff would become the quarterback for the Steelers. Now, you had a phone caller across from Ed Garvey. Sure did. The executive director, Ed Garvey, of the National Football League Players Association, talking about another pain, Kenny Payne, a wide receiver from the Green Bay Packers who was suspended for disciplinary action last week and fined $1,000. Well, a the settlement was reached between the Packers and the Players Association. Payne's $1,000 is reimbursed, but however, there's an agreement to put him on no recall waiver. So Kenny Payne, even though he's being paid for today's game and not playing, will be a free agent soon. All right, Irv, let's check up now on all the scores around the National Football League. Buffalo has just kicked a field goal in the second quarter, so they lead Atlanta 3 to nothing. Green Bay and Detroit also a battle of the field goals today. The Packers were on the board first. Now it is tied in the second quarter. St. Louis, Jim Hart was a questionable starter. He is in there playing well, 14-3 at the half. The New York Giants against the NF San Francisco 49ers, 17-3 at the half, Giants. Baltimore, Kansas City. John Brockington has scored that Kansas City touchdown. They missed the extra point. Baltimore scored twice first. Chicago and Minnesota scoreless. Check that. Minnesota Vikings behind Fran Tarkington have just gone ahead. 7-0 in Bloomington. Houston and Cleveland. Houston going without Dante Pastorini. Doesn't make any difference. John Hadle, our quarterback, and right now they lead Cleveland by a score of 10 to nothing in the first quarter, and I gotta get a check on Greg Pruitt. Meanwhile, let's take a look at some highlights now. The Green Bay Packers against Detroit. And it was Bart Starr's Packers who got on the board first. The Packers play well in the first half, and they can't do anything at all in the second half. Here is King fumbling for the Lions. Purifoy recovering for Green Bay. Fourth and goal, it was the Green Bay field goal, and the Packers led it by three. Irv? Brett down in Philadelphia, the Eagles scored first, but they trailed at halftime by a score of 14 to three, trailing the St. Louis Cardinals. And Jimmy Hart, of course, had a pretty good day in this first half, and Hart early in the game fakes a, a run here and throws a screen pass out to Ike Harris, number 84, and Ike Walsh is along the sideline and draws first blood for the Cardinals, and the Cardinals lead at this point 7-3. Hart this time hands the ball off to his great tailback, Terry Metcalf, who goes in for another score, and the Cardinals have a commanding 14-3 lead at halftime. Irv, it is hard to believe the next set of highlights. We're going to show you the New York Giants and the San Francisco 49ers. You'd think that the New York Giants were strictly an unbeatable football team as you watch them in their blue jerseys here. Watch San Francisco. Jackson with the fumble. Kelly recovers. Now watch Pisarczyk of the Giants go to Shirk. Look at his protection. Look how wide open Shirk is. It was 10-3. Now watch the 49ers try to punt. This is unbelievable. A couple of plays later, Spencer simply dove into the end zone for the giant touchdown. It was 17-3. Now watch Plunkett in action. He wants Washington. Time. Downfield deep. Under through. And it was Kelly with still another turnover for the Giants. And the score in that game is 17-3. And as Jimmy the Greek told you on the pregame show, Ken Meyer of the San Francisco 49ers could be in serious trouble, particularly after today. And the NFL Today will continue on CBS right after these messages from your local stations. How far should an advertising girl go to get an account? Watch the new comedy on our own tonight following Rhoda on CBS. During the 17 years of their existence, the Dallas Cowboys have had only one head coach, Tom Landry. He started out in 1960 with a ragtag expansion team, which went the entire year without a victory. But right from the start, Landry knew he was going to build a mountain, as sung by Sammy Davis, Jr. Going to build a mountain from a little hill. Going to build me a mountain, at least I hope I will. Gonna build a mountain, gonna build it high. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, 
The St. Louis Cardinals trying to win seven in a row against the Philadelphia Eagles have a halftime lead of 14 to three. We started this entire day. Everyone was saying, how's Jim Hart? Is he going to start? Is he going to be able to play? We watched him warm up. He looked like he was in pain. So he comes out and he sips the ball. 10 of 12, 128 yards and a touchdown. There's no evidence of any injury. I'll tell you one thing. He's just playing a Super Bowl game. And a lot of people had questions in their, in their, in their mind whether he could play or not. And I don't think there's any doubt that this ball player is some kind of a man coming off of injury like this. He's been hurting all week and coming in and doing a great job. I think something that's interesting here today, too, the Eagles struck first. They moved well. They got the field goal, took a 3 to nothing lead. The Cardinals came right back. One of the drives taking 6 minutes and 28 seconds. It was a beautiful thing. They had two penalties. They overcame those and roared right up the field. Gary, the, the thing that's, that's really great about it is the ball control is necessary in a ball game like this. If you want to keep the other team away from that ball, you've got to have it. So I think that the both teams started off on fire. The Eagles had the momentum, they had the enthusiasm, but I think that shifted over back over to the St. Louis Cardinals, and they've controlled that ball, and they've controlled the ball game. Unless something happens this second half, it's going to be a one-way game. The thing that's, I think, so different about the Eagles is Ron Jaworski. Maybe that's an understatement, but he seems to give this team a positive attitude. They come out, they, they think they can make things happen. Well, this is what Vermeil said this morning. In fact, I talked to him down on the field prior to the game, and he says, we have a positive attitude. We've got a young quarterback in Jaworski who's a kid who's a leader. He's the kind of guy that sets an example for the rest of the team. And he's the kind of guy that we need out there leading our ball club. And, you know, that momentum they've got to get back again and get in there. Well, this game historically has never been decided very early. So if that runs true to form, it'll continue here this afternoon. 14 to 3, the St. Louis Cardinals leading the Philadelphia Eagles here in Veterans Stadium. I get it right. Yeah, I work hard and I play hard and I use new STP gas treatment. You just pump it in your tank and it goes to work cleaning your carburetor. I take good care of my wheels on account of I'm cheap. I bet you are too. Try it. The Quintrix two color picture tube from Panasonic brings you a very lifelike picture. Because Quintrix two is our inline picture tube with an extra pre-focus lens that concentrates and focuses the electron beam to bring you Panasonic's sharpest picture ever. So lifelike, you may even feel you're part of the picture. Quintrix 2, one more reason Panasonic is just slightly ahead of our time.
When you win games in the last minute, like the St. Louis Cardinals, you gotta have heart. That's why we're called the Cardiac Cards. Hello, I'm Dan Deardorff, and I'd like to show you where I live and work. This fantastic gateway arch stands for the settlers and trappers who came through here on their way to explore America. Some of them stayed and passed on their pioneer spirit. That's why the arch stands for a new St. Louis, too. For our new stadium and a rebuilt downtown. For new riverboats on the Mississippi, new parks and fountains, and people enjoying their town. These people are United Way volunteers. They're neighbors, fans, and teammates working for the Boy Scouts, Salvation Army, and many other agencies funded by our local United Way. They're proud of the Cardinals, our city, and our United Way. I guess you could say they have the spirit of St. Louis. For all of them, we'd like to say thanks to you. It works for all of us, the United Way. Dan Deardorff for that preceding announcement. That announcement brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. A lot of people feel number 72 is a premier offensive tackle in the National Football League. The Forrest Gregg Award. All pro out of Michigan. The number one ranked team right now in the country. You know, that time of possession in the first half, Tom Matty, really surprises me. You know, the Cardinals led, but not by near what I thought they would. They had 15 minutes, 7 seconds. Eagles, 14 minutes, 53 seconds. It's a, it, That's an interesting statistic, mainly because in the first quarter, it was really all the Eagles, and in the second quarter, it was all St. Louis. So now the Cards will get the ball to start the second half of play. Terry Metcalf, the deep man. Jerry Latton and Wayne Morris flank him. Horst Muehlman, who kicked a field goal in the first half of 28 yards. The only scoring the Eagles have had thus far. They trail 14 to 3, and the second half is underway. Muehlman hitting a little bit short. Metcalf at the 5. 15 to the 20 to the 25-yard line. And guess who was over there on the tackle? <laughs> That's a man in Philadelphia here. Big number 83, Vince Papali. Here, here's a great shot of him coming down here. This is Mr. Desire. This is a guy who made it on his own, came from nowhere, never played any college ball hardly. Comes in there, breaks, gets away from the blocker, comes in, makes a diving shoe sting right in there. Got a little help, too. Eric Johnson helping. You know, he and his dad used to come to the Eagles game, sit here and watch, and he always wanted to be an Eagle, and what a, what a dream come true. A 30-year-old rookie last year. <laughs> they had a great article in Sports Illustrated around, uh, about him, and... Here's a guy that's just a self-made man. At the 24 now, the Cardinals of the ball. A give to Wayne Morris, and Morris out to the 27, possibly a 28-yard line. John Bunning, the left side linebacker from North Carolina, making the tackle. Statistically, in that first half, I tell you, it's pretty, pretty even, except for passing. That's right. Look at the first downs there, eight, eight to nine plays, which was very interesting. Philadelphia had 31 plays because compared to St. Louis's 28 plays. I tell you, the time of possession really fooled me. Well, I thought, I really thought that the uh, St. Louis had, uh, you know, an extra five, seven minutes more than, uh, than Philadelphia had on that first, in the first half. Second down, seven. Hard off to Morris again, and Morris trying to get outside to the 30, and he's got a first down as he comes out to the 34 and a half yard line. Randy Logan making the tackle. You know, Morris, at the start of the year, had an injured Achilles tendon, an injury that really scared the Cardinal coaching staff. But evidently, it's mended, and he's full steam. He's coming in there, and he's playing in front of a guy right now, Jim Otis, an old Buckeye friend of mine who's had some great statistics as far as for the, uh, for the St. Louis Cardinals. And he's sitting on a bench. Not, you know, he's, he's not too happy about this at all, I wouldn't imagine. But Mr. Morris is doing one whale of a kind of a job there for him. You know, Otis had 115 yards last year in a game against the Eagles. Just short of the 35, a first down for the Cardinals. Bottom of the screen is Gray, Harris to the top. Hart, oh, what a hit put on on that play. As Carl Harrison hit Wayne Morris the moment he got the ball. He was almost in the backfield before it was snapped. You can take a look at the quickness of this big man. As soon as he gets that ball snap, watch where that Harsley comes right through. Has an inside stun on, breaks to the inside, and Morris is just wrapped up. That's one of those plays you're just lucky to get the <laughs> ball, right? <laughs> you're right. You or unlucky. Maybe it's unlucky. <laughs> Harrison. <laughs> what team are you at? That's right. <laughs> Second down, a loss of a yard. Second and 11. <laughs> Mark's going to throw. Beautiful protection. Wide open, Wayne Morris, and Morris fighting for that first down to the 45-yard line. 
The protection was picture perfect on that play. All right, here we go again. What are you going to call this time? First down or third? I am staying away from that. My <laughs> eyes have failed me twice today. I'll tell you one thing. It's another close call. I think it's right there. <laughs> I tell you, you learned that from Woody Hayes. <laughs> He's got an eye like an eagle on the sideline. It looks like it's going to be a short yardage situation. Third down. I would have called it almost. I'd have, I'd have been wrong again. I'd have. All right. Tom Brahaney now coming in along with Jackie Smith as I care as the Mel Gray leave. Third and, well, inches, as it says on the screen. You know, this is where Philadelphia, if they can come up with a big play, stop this third down, they can get that ball back. Again, St. Louis is eating up that clock. They have 12 minutes and a half remaining in this third quarter. All right, to Morris, and he was doubled up, but he got it. He paid for that one. Wayne Morris over the middle. Carl Harrison hit him and kind of doubled him up. But it is a first down. The key to going over the top is to get over the top. The key on a short yardage play, especially when it's an inches situation, is to get that foot right down where the line of scrimmage is. If you can get that, the offensive line can get that charge initially across, and that back can come up right behind him and then come up over the top. That's when you get that first down for him. And he did that. First down just across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Gray to the bottom. Harris to the top. Looks like offside against Manny Sistrunk. Flags going everywhere. Sistrunk, who came over in that trade for Joe Lavender last year, firing off, but it's going to be a legal procedure. He was drawn off by the Cardinals. Well, that's an interesting call. I didn't see anybody move on that line, unless they were calling on a quarterback for bobbing that head of his again. So a five-yard step off. Let's listen now to Fred Wyatt. False start, number 66. Our man Dobler. Conrad Dobler called on the illegal procedure back to the 41 and a half. Those guys in the trenches, you flinch and look out. <laughs> They're going to come right after you. First down now, 15 yards to go. Philadelphia has to do it right now. Let's get that ball back and get that ball game going here. Harris to the bottom, Gray to the top of the screen. Quick pitch, Terry Metcalf. And Metcalf gets four to the 46-yard line. Drew Mahalik, the former Notre Dame standout, over there to make the tackle. And so it comes to a third down. Cleveland Houston. Houston's coming in with 10-7 after the first quarter. Pastorini did not start last week. That's when they had all those quarterbacks taking the, taking the pipe down there with uh, the Pittsburgh game with uh, Bradshaw. And then his substitute came in, separated his shoulder. So... And Pastorini had sprained his ankle very severely, and I doubt whether he's going to play at all today. John Hadle playing today, right? Big John. I Hadle. think I said third down. It is second down, in fact. Second and 13. The ball at the 44-yard line. Art back to throw. Again, the protection is beautiful. Up the middle, Ike Harris. Frank Lamaster was zeroing in on Ike. Again, Tom Matty, the blocking is superb up front. I tell you, this is why they led the league last year, and you know, and not getting to the quarterback. You have those big offensive linemen giving the time and the protection. Here's Hart setting up again. You can see the kind of blocking that they got. They have a three-man rush on, which helps a little bit. That man in the middle ain't gonna get no place with those two guards looking. The ball is a little high, but any time you know you get your hands on that thing, you should catch it. And that was one of the rules. Whenever you we come back to the huddle with Unitas, and if you had your hand on that ball and dropped it, boy, you came down with your head back between your legs. He wouldn't say anything. He'd just stare at <laughs> he, he didn't have to. Third and 13 now. All right, again. Mel Gray, and Gray is hit. Now, did he get the first down? He had to come back to the ball and see. They did not get it. They're a yard short of that first down. Mel Gray coming back to the ball. John Outlaw played this one very well. He sure did. This is where they have the big rush on. They've got the three-man line, but they've got some games coming in. The linebackers are charging in. A little bit of pushing and shoving up there. Hart steps up. It. Perfect throw. And Mr. Outlaw comes up, makes the tackle, stopping them from the first down, which puts them in a punting situation. This is the thing that they have to do to get that ball back so Jaworski can go to work on St. Louis. Marshall back at the 10, Dwayne Carroll. He got a big 47-yard kick in the waning minutes of the first half. Hits one a mile high. Marshall coming up, calling for a fair catch. Jeff Severson right under him. That's a tough catch to <laughs> oh, make. Oh, I tell you what. That's one place that I never wanted to be. Just didn't want to be. Well, Marshall did the job. 
And the Eagles have the football. They trail 14 to 3. Should have bought Mobile One. The oil it saves you gas, you know. Should have bought Mobile One. Helps you start at 35 below. Should have bought Mobile One. And your temperature hits 500. You're cool. Should have bought Mobile One. You only change it every 15,000 miles. Mobile One, the oil that does it all. Take it from an expert. Want to cut your fuel bills? Whether your house is new or old, put insulation everywhere. It can save you money. Your attic. You need a 6 to 12 inch blanket of pink Owens Corning fiberglass. Walls. Full insulation. Unheated crawl space. Insulate below the floor. Live where it's cold. Insulate basement walls. See your Owens Corning fiberglass supplier to learn all about insulation. Insulation is cheaper than oil. Well, Dwayne Carroll got a lot of height on that punt, but he did not get very much distance. It was a 22-yard kick. And the 23-yard line, the Eagles have the ball. In motion comes Smith. Jaworski off to Mike Hogan, and Hogan has run very well, continues to do so. Off to the 30-yard line. You know, I'm talking to the Cardinal coaches before this game. They said Hogan, Lusk, Sullivan, they're not maybe the big play performers. They have great balance, and they'll fight you for every yard. They have, that, they have that ability to pick that hole. Hogan right there, picked that hole, cut back to the inside, picked up good yardage. It's a second down. He's, this is the kind of situation a quarterback likes to be in where it's second in a short yardage situation where he can throw the ball and still yet come up with a first down if he misses it. Second and two at the 30. Again, the Hogan, a flag thrown on a play, and as you said before, Tom Maddie, when they throw it in that conglomeration of everyone. It's usually a holding call. Charlie Davis making the stop. Preliminary signal is holding against Philadelphia. You just can't have these kind of mistakes to keep a ball club moving. When you get a 15 yard attack down you boy it's tough. It's going to be now second and 13 yards. It's a passing situation. It will be a good time to either call a draw or a screen. Holding number 64. That's Ed George. The offensive tackle. He was quite a performer in the Canadian Football League four times, an all CFL performer. Out of Wake Forest, third year man. He came down to Baltimore for a while and sat on a bench, didn't like it too much, and finally got traded up here. And he's one great football player. Big man. Hogan, by the way, has 51 yards rushing now on 10 carries. Let's make it second and 12. In motion again comes Smith. Jaworski looking, throwing to Smith. Smith up to the 25 yard line. That time, Lee Nelson and Mark Arneson coming over. Arneson moved from the middle to the right-hand side. He's the veteran of that linebacking core in his sixth year out of Arizona. You know, you say that they don't have the same playbook, but that's the same play that Metcalf went down the side. Or, uh, uh, Ike Harris. Ike Harris went down the sideline on, which is a quick screen to the outside. What you try to do is get that offensive tackle, get out there, and you usually try to cut off that block. He knocks off that defensive back to the outside, and you try to cut up to the inside and then break to the outside. You know, they haven't thrown to Carmichael very much. Third down, eight yards to go. Jaworski on a third and eight. Prefley and Jeff Severson almost got it. They had five defensive backs in on that third and eight, and Jeff Severson was closest to the ball at the 35-yard line. And so now it's a fourth down. They're talking about Jaworski here in the time he has to throw. They've got a couple games on. The tackles are coming to the inside. Jaworski sitting in there. He's got a lot of time to throw that ball. And he's throwing his, to his premier receiver right now, that tight end of theirs. Prefley has just had a great year. So when you're doing this, you've got to knock it off in bits and pieces. You can't take those bombs all the time. You've got to get those first downs and move the ball down the field. Spike Jones to kick from the 10-yard line. Big rush. Terry Metcalf at the 35 is going to let it bounce. And down there in a hurry is Martin Mitchell for the Philadelphia Eagles. The ball bouncing inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. So the Cardinals have the football. They also have a 14-3 lead as the Cardinals they can ill afford to drop their fourth game of the year right now on top. Spike Jones with a 42-yard punt. Sets the ball up at the Cardinal 33-yard line. 
Eight minutes, 18 seconds to go, third quarter. The Cardinals lead it 14 to three. Jim Hart on the quick pitch to Metcalf. Metcalf tried to cut against the grain and Carl Harrison just bulldogged it. Wyatt Harrison on a couple of plays has showed amazing strength. He's got amazing strength and some great lateral movement along the line. He is really coming down. Metcalf tried to do that jump act again and he almost got driven right into the ground. You know, Harrison was seventh round draft pick last year, but said he started eight games and, you know, he played basketball at Maryland State. Can you imagine him on the boards? Now we're going to watch. They wigwag the plays in. Jim Hannafin, see him going to his ear along with Bill Donkers in the warm up jacket. Now Jim Hart reads that and knows what play to call. Now how, I don't know. <laughs> From the 35, here's Hart back to throw. Mel Gray, the intended receiver, but again, covered very well by John Outlaw. That's twice they haven't had any room to complete that pass. Let's go back to that wigwag a minute. Tom, you know, you waste a lot of time running in. That's alternate right. receivers or running backs. So what they do, they have Donkers in the warm-up jacket, Jim Hannafin, the offensive line coach, both give signs. One of them is the real one, the other one's the decoy. Now look at him. Look See at him going. I'll tell you what. Now can you tell me what formation that would be? I have no idea. Don't even guess. It was a lot easier with a wristband. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, Matty. I hope it didn't rain and run the numbers together on that tape. Oh, when listen, you I had it inside of plastic. <laughs> <laughs> can you believe that? Shula found that thing for me. All right. Third down, nine from the 35-yard line. Boy, this game is getting so sophisticated. <laughs> Here's Hart again. Third and nine, bunting after him, and incomplete. Good coverage that time. Excellent coverage by John Sanders. There's Don Coriel. He's not happy with that. Steve Mazarkowicz, number 15, the number one draft pick behind him. That was just great pass defense. I'll tell you one thing. He had the time to throw that ball, and it was a key third down situation where Philadelphia has got to get control of that ball. They're going to get a little better field position this time. They may be able to come out with some offense like they did at the beginning of the game. Now Carroll the last time had a 22 yard kick in the first half he did exceptionally well. He'll kick from the 20 yard line. Larry Marshall back deep. They've got that whole team up there again. Looks like they may have the rush on. Ten Drop men. Back. Nope they're going to put a return on and Carroll hits this one extremely well. A very fine kick. Marshall at the 21 yard line. He's getting a wall to the near side. A flag is thrown to the 25 and to the 30. I believe we've got clipping coming up against Philadelphia. You could see the wall forming to the near side of the field and Marshall was headed there in a hurry. But two flags have been thrown one inside the 20 and one at the 24 yard line. That really puts him back in the hole. You know it's a very interesting call because what happened on that that the wall was being set up and the St. Louis team was going to the sideline to the far sideline over there. And as the wall is being set up, one of the defensive players or offensive players, when it's a punt, just set, you know, came in behind the guy, and he didn't even really throw that block on him. But all you have to do is touch him in the back, and it's all over. That was a 44-yard kick. So Dwayne Carroll kicked the ball under some pretty good pressure situations very well. Here's Fred Wyatt's call on it. Personal foul, clipping, number 54. All right, that penalty is against Drew Mahalik, a linebacker who's on that special team. He was the man guilty of the clip. Ball now at the 10-yard line. Jaworski wasting no time. He's going to the air. Charlie Smith down there with Nelson. He's out of bounds. It's no good. Smith was out of bounds at the 45-yard line. That was a great catch and a great throw. If he could have just hung it up inside a little bit farther. Hey, Jaworski's got some imagination, I'll tell you that. A little courage on that play. He threw that ball a long way. Had a little bump and push in there. But he really concentrates on that ball. That is a great catch. Had Look about three more yards over there. He had been <laughs> gone. Well, Lee Nelson. Boy, last week it was Drew Pearson. This week <laughs> is Charlie Smith. It doesn't get any easier for that young second-year man from Florida State. But he's going to be a good one. I tell you, you get a baptism in a hurry. Your experience piles up on plays like that, right? Let me tell you, I, did, I never wanted to play that corner spot because you're out there all by yourself. Nick Vermeil and his crew looking on. Second and ten, quick pitch to Tom Sullivan. Sullivan got a block. He's out to the 20, a flag thrown. He's at the 19-yard line. Flag thrown just about the time Sullivan made his cut. Looks like a clipping penalty. 
Mike Sensible coming up and making the tackle. And right now the Eagles are hurting themselves with the penalties. This is holding. This is the same thing that, you know, that St. Louis did last week. The penalties killed them. 11 for 166 last, last week. Now Philadelphia is turning around doing the same thing. We do have an update on that, the game against Cleveland and Houston. And it's interesting, Pastorini is now in the game and Cleveland leads 14 to 10. Boy, Cleveland is some schedule. Holding schedule. number 64. That's Ed George again. That's twice they've called it. We're going to look at Ed George and see if we can pick up that holding call. The big man with the beard. There he is out there front. Lee holding on there. Got him by the arm. Just turns him around. Locks it. Steve Niels was the guy who was holding on to. <laughs> Second and 15. Jaworski on a little delay to Solomon and Mike Dawson hit him. Did that ball get away from him? No, he... But he knocked him right back in the backfield with the quarterback, though. Mike Dawson firing through. Ron Yankowski. And that ball is on the one-yard line. Good penetration that time by that forward wall. You know, you talk about momentum, Gary, and here's where momentum is really in the favor of the St. Louis Cardinals right now. They've got everything going for them. The breaks have been going against the Philadelphia Eagles. The penalties have killed them. They're back up down to the one-yard line down there. A third down situation. No matter what he does, he's going to come out in a bad position. Boy, you got to be uncomfortable taking a snap on the goal line. Third down and 20 yards to go. Gives off to Hogan. Hogan gets it out of there and brings it out across the five-yard line. He really picks his way well. He runs for those openings. Fourth down coming up. The crowd booing here. You know, in a situation like that, it was the best thing that he could do right now is get, turn that ball back over. You don't want to take a chance of throwing that ball. They're looking for the pass. He had a long yard each to go in a situation like that. The best thing is to punt that ball out, let the defense play good defense, and come on back. And now Spike Jones will go back just as far as he can without stepping out of the back of the end zone. He's looking behind him. Back deep, Terry Metcalf at the 45. He hit a fine kick, and Metcalf's got to get back for it. At the 45 of St. Louis. To the 50-yard line, and the Eagles came out of that situation much better than I'm sure they expected to. You're darn right. That's the, that's the key thing right there. They punted that ball right out there. Got them out there where they've got to work to get that extra thing. 14-3, the Cardinals. That kick by Spike Jones went 53 yards. Earlier, Dwayne Carroll for the Cardinals kicked out of the end zone 47 yards. And look at those statistics on Jim Hart. From the 49, the St. Louis end of the field. The Cardinals with a 14-3 lead. 5.20 to go, third quarter. There's that play they worked earlier at Ike Harris for a touchdown. And Harris has got it again. This time, not for as long a distance. It's the first time he went 38 yards for a touchdown, and Herman Edwards made the stop. Well, if it works once, try it again. The shoestring tackle. By the way, it's an interesting statistic today that's happened. O.J. is the second man ever to go over that 10,000-yard mark in a career. Jim Brown was the other guy. So far today, O.J. has nine carries for 70 yards, and that's in the second, second quarter. The juice off to a slow start this year, but he's had fast years where he starts getting it together. <laughs> he sure does. He looks like he was playing hurt. I saw the game in Baltimore, and he just wasn't himself, Gary. Gain of five on that last play, second and five. There's a delay up the middle to Terry Metcalf, and Metcalf to the 40. Got the first down to the 38-yard line of Philadelphia. Boy, he was stepping high with those legs that time. Bunning and LeMaster, the two linebackers making the tackle. You know, they talk about quick feet in football. Metcalf would be the epitome of that. Here's how the hole opens up as the back sees it coming in. Metcalf, Metcalf opens up. It's just looks like you drive a truck through it right now, but it does close up quick. He breaks to the outside, carrying that ball out there. Gets good yardage, gets a first down. All right, back to the live action, a first down at the 38-yard line. Hart to Wayne Morris, and right now the Cardinals are running the ball right at him. Across the 35 to the 34, Bill Berkey making the tackle. Mr. Morris has had a great day to date so far. I'll tell you, he's playing real hard. He's picking his holes well. He's following those linebacks, linemen up there. You know, the one thing I used to do after a ball game, Gary, was the first thing I used to go to were my linemen. Say, thank you, boys. 
Those are the guys that open it. Where the, everything's done on the trenches down there. And you got some big horses open up the holes. Morris, 37 yards on 10 carries. Metcalf, 46 and 14 carries. Round 16. This is Morris again, and he is straightened around and spun down on that play by Frank Lamaster. Two linebackers from the University of Kentucky in that starting lineup for the Philadelphia Eagles. Lamaster and Tom Ehlers. One of them a second-year man. Check that. One of them a fourth-year man. The other a third-year man. And they're getting a chance to play a lot now since they've gone to four linebackers, 3-4 defense. Well, Marion Campbell came up from Atlanta. Here's a great, to me, one of the great coaches around. This guy is probably one of the best defensive coaches. He's really done a fantastic job molding this unit to be where it's at right now. The Cardinals on a third down now. They're five of nine on third down conversions. Hart with lots of time. A flag is thrown, an incomplete pass. I care the intended receiver. Now, a flag was thrown right around where Jim Hart was, and we've got holding against St. Louis. I think that's one of the first breaks that's gone, gone for the Eagles for a change. You get them out of that field goal range. So, 10 yards will be stepped off against St. Louis. Both well, these teams have been their worst enemy here in this third quarter, penalty wise. This is going to be an interesting call because it'll be a fourth down situation or it'll be a third Holding long yard. Number 66, decline, fourth down. All right, would you agree with that I decision? would agree. I would agree. I don't know if Jim Bakken will try to come in or not. He is coming in to try the field goal, but it puts him back there where you got a 50-some yard field goal, 52-yard field goal, or 50-yard field goal. Boy, Cleveland, who has had no patsies to play this year, leading Houston. 21 to 10. Now, this will be a 50-yard field goal attempt. Roger Worley to hold. Jim Bakken to try the 50-yarder, and the kick is going to be short. Jim Bakken, who came in here, 4 of 9 in the field goal department, attempts a 50-yarder. And the Philadelphia Eagles hold. They take over. They trail 14 to 3, 2.28 to go, third quarter. 